Okay, so let's jump over to our Rhino model and let's look at an example. So what I have here in this definition is I have our webcam video cap <clears throat> video stream component in our canvas and it's feeding a bitmap into an optical flow component and that is found under Firefly Vision Optical Flow. Um, and it works very similar to all of the other components that we've looked at in terms of the gradient and contour vector in that you can set the X and Y the scale of the X and Y axis of the field that you want to uh, generate as well as setting the line length and the number of pixels that you want to uh, skip in the sampling. But what happens with the optical flow is if I stay very still, all of the vector information remains relatively small. But as I begin to move around, it's actually sampling the <clears throat> pixel and looking at the uh, pixel uh, vector before it, the actual gradient vector before um, in the frame just previous to this and comparing it and creating a vector from that. So you're getting a sense of the amount of movement that is occurring in the image, um, essentially at every pixel that you're sampling. And you can set the length of the line um, based on uh, or whatever value you want in the slider. So really what you're getting is a interesting effect um, that really is responding in real time over a field condition that is giving you something, some information about what's happening in your image. Okay, so I'm going to now disable this and we're going to look at a second example. Uh, I'm going to scroll down and enable these components by selecting and right clicking and hitting enable. And now what we're going to look at is the temporal smoothing algorithm that we spoke about just a little bit ago. And these two components, actually we have two components that we can address. Uh, one is under, fire, they're both under Firefly Vision. One is called a cumulative exposure and one is movement exposure. Uh, but essentially they're using that same temporal smoothing algorithm um, that we were just looking at. Uh, in this case, the difference is that the cumulative exposure the one is happening on the color channel so it's adding a little bit of each of the color values over time based on this percentage so in this case 90 percent of the frame that happened just previous to this is being used and 10 percent of the incoming bitmap is being applied to it um, so what's interesting about this is that all of the pixels that remain the same say all of the pixels in the background of my image uh, which aren't really moving, uh, they converge very nicely because the image va the, it, those color values are staying the same the entire time. Um, however, based on where I'm moving, I'm adding a little bit of color to each frame uh, based on my movement. And so you can get traces of information uh, and that will reveal itself over time. And depending on how high this weight value is, if I take that weight up to 0.99, for example, it will very slowly converge, but it will reveal things uh, that are either moving or not moving in an image. Um, this, the other component is the movement exposure, and it works pretty much the same way, except that in this case, it's actually working on the movement channel instead of the color data. So it returns a black and white image where the pixels that are not moving are going, going to be black, Whereas any pixel that is deemed having moved or changed its value from the previous position will get a little bit brighter. So if you move a lot, if you begin to wave, um, you'll actually begin to see very white, uh, the whitest amount of information. But if you begin to slow down, uh, the actual image will convert to black because you're not getting much movement accumulating in the image. So those are two interesting analysis techniques to take the averaging or the temporal smoothing algorithm and apply it to video data. So I'm going to disable that and show one last example um, down here. And let me just select these and enable it. And what this component is doing is we're going to look at uh, not necessarily the averaging or the smoothing, the accumulation of image, images on top of one another. But in this case, we're actually going to try to do some analysis on the video image itself. So what I have here is a mesh from image. Uh, this is the same one found under vision um, and mesh from image. 
Um, and I've set that so that the scale is going between 0 and 1 in both the x and y axes because the, the component that we're going to be looking at here is the video averages component. And that's, under, that's found under Firefly Vision Video Averages. And so the video averages component is actually asking for what is the bitmap and then define two points that you want to examine within the image. And you can actually feed this a list of values. In this case, I'm feeding it uh, using these multidimensional sliders, two points that uh, define a region that I want to analyze in the image. So in this case, I'm actually using this red line to indicate I'm only going to be sampling all of the pixel data within this region. It excludes anything that's outside that region. So here, what it returns is a lot of information. The C output is the average color that it finds within that region. So it's actually taking all of those pixels and finding the average color. The V is the average vector, movement vector. So if I turn these components on, we'll actually see, and turn this one on, the preview, the M is the centroid of movement. So what that means is it's actually uh, finding where is the average amount of movement occurring in the image. So as I move around, you can see that sphere is finding the average amount of movement in the image. And then the vector is actually being scaled, if I zoom out a little bit, we can actually begin to get an understanding of how the image is changing based on that vector. So if I move to the right, it will go one way. If I move to the left, it will go another. If I go up or down, it will actually begin to point in the direction of the movement. But again, it's only sampling it within that certain range. Uh, the last three outputs are the R, G, and B, which are essentially the centroid of each of the colors, the average of those colors. So what you can do is actually find the centroid of all of the red pixels, or what is the maximum amount of red or the average amount of red in the image, or blue or green. And so if I hold up a um, blue uh, sphere, you can see that that blue dot is actually following it because it's, at, it's trying to sample the image and find all of the blue pixels and find the average of all those blue pixels. So you can see that the, those blue, red, and green dots are actually beginning to analyze the data in real time and move uh, based on the pixel data that it's finding. So you can analyze for the red channel, the green channel, or the blue channel for the averages within that. And again, this is all real time, and we can change any of these uh, points or positions to make uh, multiple regions within an image that we want to sample, um, or just to begin to examine and analyze any type of video for what's going on in terms of the color or movement values. Okay.